visit to London, Easter 1959. After months of preparation, all was ready, and the dawn of March 31st broke very early for 41 excited people. Farewells and loving kisses soon give way to the pleasures of travel. Here the party is passing Bedford on its way to London. The first morning took us to the Tower of London. Here we are ascending into the White Tower and walking past the place where Anne Boleyn lost her head. The happy party are going down the steps only to turn round to see these guards coming off duty. Guards even off duty are very interesting. Embarking at Westminster Pier, we go downstream past Scott's Discovery. The monument and other important buildings along the embankment. Everyone cranes their necks to see the sights of London. This is not one of the sights. The boat turns round and we put in at the tower. Here we're looking at the Tower of London from the river. It truly shows its worth as a prison. Having gone underneath Tower Bridge, we proceed on our way to Greenwich. Passing the busy scenes along the banks of the Thames, boats being unloaded, passing barges, lighters, every kind of craft. Here we are boarding our own craft, that is the Cutty Sark. One of the old salts on the Cutty Sark takes the party round and explains various items. One thing which he doesn't explain is the way in which the old sailors used to climb this rigging. In the background, the Royal Naval College, the building with the two domes. Everyone listening once again, learning their lessons out of doors. Having admired that beautiful figurehead at the prow of the Cutty Sark, we come back again upstream, passing once more the various craft on the River Thames, back to Westminster Pier. Next day, we visited the Thames again in a more attractive and placid mood. At this point, we're on a small ferry boat, reaching down towards Windsor. Here comes the castle heaving into sight, just before we arrive at the jetty. Having climbed the hill in Windsor, we enter the grounds of the castle. The gateway through which we've just come. To 
Well, our hero shows the way. Yes, we're going up there to the round tower and admiring all the beautiful foliage, flowers and blooms, which were in full beauty even though it was so early in the year. Even the guards turned out for our arrival and they slow marched through the gateway preceded by the, the guards band, in this case the Irish guards. Here they come in the pomp and circumstance, trumpets blaring, drums rolling through the gateway. Eton College, in its quieter moments, without the top hats. Everyone was thrilled to hear in the morning that the Queen was due to emerge from the castle on one of her visits to a local hospital. So we rushed back and hastily took up our positions at the foot of the round tower again and waited by the main gateway and here comes the Queen in her car, sitting on the side furthest from you. You get a glimpse as she passes by quickly turns the corner. We say goodbye to the Queen's home at Windsor, here seen from the long drive stretching for three miles up to the castle. And we go to visit a castle which was popular with a, a more ancient King of England, namely Henry VIII. We took great delight in the gardens at Hampton Court. The grounds were literally covered with daffodils. Children are not in the maze at Hampton Court at this point. They just escaped from it. of another perfect day, we leave Hampton Court behind, get back in the coach and back to London. Fun and games on the beach, a setting quite different from that which we left in the last picture. No doubt you'll recognise some of the people on this picture making their home runs, enjoying biffing the ball with their fists. Look at this for a picture of sheer delight. Most of this picture is without comment. We're letting the action speak for themselves. Especially some of the actions which you will view in a few minutes. Yes. The beauties of Longview brave the elements and stagger about in the water. These are the beauties, and these are quite content just to throw stones back from this pebbly beach. Is this the beast? The beauties are captivated by the beast, or is it just captured? even inveigled into this game, which was sheer torment, trying to run about on the pebbles. 
Another beauty of the party is escorted into the water. Quite a brave thing because I can assure you it was extremely cold. On Saturday morning, it being Saturday morning, we decided to get our shopping done. We'd just come out of Gamages and down the hole in the road, which took us to so many places in London, the underground. And arriving at a far more beautiful spot, the terrace of Westminster Palace. Looking across to County Hall, Westminster Bridge, and the River Thames at this point. The party here assembled on the terrace, and Mr. Harold Wilson, the local MP, standing among the children, quite happily chatting to them, answering the questions. No, that isn't a cabinet meeting going on in the centre of the crowd there. At this point, we'd actually been through the Palace of Westminster and been shown the various parts, and we were just relaxing, ready for coming out. Here are various members of the party emerging into Westminster Square with Big Ben in the background to tell us the time was 20 past 12. Yes, to still a different scene, the zoo in Regent's Park and the giant panda playing with this tyre, doing all kinds of amusing antics. Can he get out of that one? There were two who didn't stay to see that. Passing by the it with the polar bears prowling backward and forward. Some of the beauties of Longview admire the setting. Or feel disgusted with the photograph. And this one was just too tired to care. Brown bears attracted everyone, sitting up, begging for food, any kind of food, apples, biscuits, cakes, bits of bread, anything. They miss nothing. Interested, still watching the animals. These, these were the guards of the zoo, I think, standing as sentinels. Until one of them caught sight of us, and decided he didn't like the look of us. Longview State Coach goes touring the grounds of Regent's Park Zoo. back again in quite a happy mood. After a very hot day, everyone deserved their lolly ices with which to cool off, sitting outside the cafe at Regent's Park Zoo. The last day, the return journey from Connaught Hall, seen here, and Torrington Square, over which the bedrooms looked, 
we say fond farewells and wish to come back again. On the way back, we stop at Stratford, where once again we have the usual refreshments, and then go walking around this very ancient and historic place to find the various points which attract so many visitors throughout the year. Here we are, arriving at Shakespeare's birthplace, where lessons still go on, even though we're not in school. quite a pleasant process, as you'll notice. Looking at the inscription, which unfortunately couldn't be seen because it was shaded, the party continues on its way down these historic streets Past the grammar school where Shakespeare received some of his education. Past this ancient chapel, very urgently needing repairs. It stands just at the end of the grammar school. Admiring the badges outside and then walking past it. We come to a different kind of reminder of Shakespeare, the Memorial Theatre. waving on the balcony across the river, the swans gently gliding past, people out in their boats on a Sunday afternoon, enjoying the pleasures of this very charming town. The Avon at Stratford. the end of our journey as the coach 